Hey friends, I'm Rhiannon from Drawn by Rhiannon and today I'm going to show you how to make a pencil case. So if you're quite new to sewing and you've maybe not sewn a zip yet, you might be really worried about sewing them. Some of them are tricky, I'll give you that, but there are so many different ways to put in a zip and today I'm going to show you the easiest way to put in a zip that you can use for all sorts of different size zip pouches. So it's a really handy skill to have and honestly it's much easier than you think it might be. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do the zip and how to make everything else so that you can make your very own pencil case. So to make your pencil case you just need some really simple supplies. So first of all you need some lovely printed fabric or a plain one if you just want a simple plain pencil case. And then you're also going to need a lining piece of material that is the same size as your outside material. You're also obviously going to need a sewing machine and ideally one with a zipper foot. You can put a zip in with a regular foot but it is a lot easier with a zipper foot. So if your sewing machine didn't come with one, I would recommend buying one. They're not a lot of money and honestly they're going to make zips so much easier to put in. I would also recommend having a pair of embroidery scissors, these are really good for cutting thread, gives it a nice sharp cut on the thread, and then also just a regular pair of scissors which we're going to use to trim the zip down, so these don't need to be anything fancy. The last thing that comes in really handy is a point turner, so you can get these online and in some craft shops as well, but if you don't have one of these you can literally just use anything that's a similar shape, so like a knitting needle or the blunt end of a paintbrush as well. It's also good to have an iron and an ironing board handy because once you've finished your pencil case, if you just give it a quick run over with the iron, it'll give it a really nice crisp finish and make it look even more lovely. So now that we've got all our tools, let's get started. Start with your main fabric. The size that I've got is about 23 and a half by 25 centimeters and that makes a pencil case the finished size is 21 by 11 centimeters about that so you want your main fabric and your lining fabric to be the same size so to begin with you want your main fabric facing upwards so you can see the right side of the fabric then take your zip and put the teeth side down onto the right side of your main fabric then i just put one pin in just to hold the zip and then you want to get the right side of your lining fabric and lay that on top and then just pin all along the top to hold them all together in a little sandwich. If you put your pins in perpendicular to the fabric then that means that you can sew straight over them whereas if you put them sort of in the same direction of the fabric you're going to have to take out each pin as your sewing machine won't be able to sew over them. So I would recommend at this point putting on your zipper foot it's just going to make it so much easier to put your zip in and you want to have the edge of the zipper foot right up against the side of the zip. Then we're just gonna sew along the first line and you want to just make sure that your zipper foot is staying butted up against the edge of the zip. You should be able to feel it as you're going over. So once you've got your first seam, what we're gonna do is take the pins out and turn it the right way around so that your main fabric is looking up at you. So what we're gonna do now is just top stitch along the top of this fabric. So there's two reasons for doing this. One, it gives it a really nice finish, makes it look more professional. And secondly, it helps to stop the lining fabric getting caught in the zip. So this is a really important step to do. So again, I would just put a little pin in just to make sure the fabric stays put while we're stitching. And then again, lining your zip foot up against the side of the zip. Just do a quick little top stitch along the top of your fabric. Then we're just going to repeat the process to sew the zip on the other side. So you want to put the right side of your fabric, fold it up to the top of the zip, and then you're going to take the right side of your lining fabric and fold that up to the other side of the zip. So you've got your sandwich again there. And then once again, just pin all along the top to hold it in place. And remember to put your pins in facing downwards so that you can just sew straight across them. Again, just make sure your zipper foot is lined up against the side of the zip so you can feel it as you're going along and that will make sure that you have a nice straight stitch that's nice and even as you're going along. Then take your pins out and again take it over to the right side of the fabric so that we can top stitch along that edge just like we did before. So just make sure it's all nice and lined up, put your pin in just to secure it and then stitch along the top. So 
So the next step, now that the zip's in, we need to sew up the sides. But before we do that, this bit is super important. You must fasten the zip halfway. Leave it half open, otherwise you will not be able to turn out your finished pencil case. Then you want to turn it inside out so that the right sides of the fabric are facing together. So just flip it inside out and have the right sides of the main fabric touching and the right sides of the lining fabric touching. And what we're going to do is sew up along the sides and that will finish up the pencil case. One thing to remember is to make sure that the teeth of the zip are facing away from your main fabric. So as you can see here, I'm making sure that the teeth are facing upwards, so they're facing towards the lining fabric. And then you want to line up your two lines of top stitch, so that means that when the pencil case is turned out, you'll have a nice matched up top stitch on both sides. And again, just doing the same, make sure that the teeth are facing away from the main fabric, so they're tucked into the lining fabric. This is really important because otherwise when you turn it the right way out, the zip's going to be all backwards at the edges of the seam. So this will just make sure you get a nice finish. So then just pin along the sides. Remember to face the pins perpendicular from the way that you're going to be sewing so that you can sew straight over them. And we are going to sew down the lines of the fabric here. So we're back onto the regular foot now and you just want to sew straight down. Personally I, I always double stow over the zip just to make sure it's really sewn in tightly there. And then the same on the other side but remember to leave about a two inch gap just at the bottom of the lining fabric on the second side because this is where we are going to turn out the pencil case. So if you sew it all the way up we're not going to be able to turn it the right way around so you have to remember to leave that little gap for turning there just make sure you do a bit of back stitch just by that turning because it's going to take a lot of pressure there so we need to make sure it's nice and strong. So take out all your pins and then just give your zip a trim so that it's in line with the fabric edge and then using that opening that we've just left we're going to turn it inside out. So this can be a little bit fiddly especially if you've left the hole not quite big enough but with a bit of wiggling it'll get there and you might just need to unzip the zip a bit more so that you've got a bit more room to pull the fabric through. So once you're almost there you want to grab your point turner and just go in through the opening and poke out the corners. So this is how you make sure that you get nice crisp edges on it. I always poke out the zip as well just to make sure that that's pushed out all the way as well but just be careful with this bit because you want to make sure that you don't poke all the way through the zip and break the zip. You just want to turn the edges under so you've got no raw edges showing. Pin those together and then we're just going to do a little stitch over the top. So this is where you need to be really nice and careful because you will see this stitch. So make sure it's nice and neat and obviously in the same colour as your lining fabric so that it's not too noticeable. There we go, we're almost done. All your sewing is finished, so turn off your sewing machine and head over to the ironing board. So to give it a nice crisp finish, I always just run over it with an iron. So this is just gonna give your corners a really nice crisp point, and it's also gonna make the zip lie nice and flat. Just be careful to obviously not hold the iron over the zip for too long, otherwise it might melt it. And then once we've done that, we can turn the lining inside out to make it fit inside the main fabric, and you're done. We've got our finished pencil case here and it makes a lovely gift for someone or they've just got so many uses, really handy little item to be able to make there. You can of course change the shape of it, you could have um, more of a square for a coin purse or you can make it bigger and use it for a tablet case or a makeup bag. So loads of uses for these, really handy thing to be able to sew. If you make a pencil case having followed this tutorial, I would love to see what you make. So please share a photo of your finished pencil case with me via social media. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Drawn by Rhiannon. Um, either upload a post and tag me in it or just send it to me in a DM. I would love to see what you make. 
if after watching this video you're like, nah, it's not for me, I just want to buy a ready made pencil case, then check out the link in the description for my full range of pencil cases. Obviously all the fabrics I design are exclusive to me, so if you want in a pencil case with one of my fabrics, you need to buy it off my website. I hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a like if you do, and subscribe to the channel for more videos coming very soon. Remember to click the notification bell so that you're the first to find out when I post a new video. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!